Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Morning. How are you? Morning. I'm good. How are you? I'm well. <laughs> good to see you. Yeah, me too. It's it's um six o'clock on my side now. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I had set the alarm and made sure that you know I came on. No, it's a great uh, dedication, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> Always since we started in 2020, I've been here. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining. I really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. So we'll start in a few minutes. Uh, hello, Rajeshwari. Hi. Uh, and just hello. Just so may I know from where you're joining? Are you from UK or I'm from India, Bangalore. Bangalore. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right. And now, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay. So now let's start. So from today, we are going to start with um, 13th chapter that is a Kshetra, Kshetradnya Vibhaga Yoga Shloka Sangraha. So we'll be going through all the shlokas. Uh, I'm trying to like include all the shlokas because previously what we used to do is we started with Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga and we just uh, did shlokas which are related to these topics but from vibhuti yoga uh, now we are starting to cover all the shlokas from that chapter so, so if we uh, look at bhagavad gita uh, there are total 18 chapters right so the first six chapters which are from chapter 1 to chapter 6 they are mainly dedicated for karma yoga the the all the chapters talk more about karma yoga what is the importance of uh, karma yoga and uh, how through action you can get connected with the divinity within then the next chapter that is from 7 to 12 uh, the 12th chapter was the 10th chapter was vibhuti yoga which we saw previously last four to five sessions we uh, looked into different vibhutis of shri krishna and he himself telling arjuna that uh, arjuna asks shri krishna that if i want to meditate on you and where can i see you because the divine uh, form as such is not uh, it's nirguna state it has no name and form, but for us to understand, to comprehend, Shri Krishna talks about uh, infinite, means actually there are infinite vibhutis, manifestations, but he says that I am just going to list out few of them for you to understand. Hmm? And then from chapter 13th, which is this, Kshetra Kshetradnya Vibhaga Yoga, up till the last chapter that is 18th chapter so the uh, uh, the middle one 7 to 12 they are dedicated on bhakti the stages of bhakti how you are going to develop uh, bhakti within because even if you are karma yogi jnana yogi raja yogi unless and until the uh, the devotion, the bhakti uh, is not manifesting within yourself, you cannot really uh, you know, feel that uh, the, the connection between you and the divine or you yourself become so much uh, one with the God so there is almost no difference there is no duality there is a complete sense of oneness so chapter 7 to 12 mostly dedicated on the principles and various stages of bhakti and the last six chapters dedicated to jnana yoga okay so um, for uh, 
going through this chapter, 13th chapter, I think it is one of the uh, toughest chapter <laughs> uh, from all the chapters of Bhagavad Gita because you uh, need to use your thinking power. So I would uh, now, you know, uh, suggest everyone to keep your thinking caps on and uh, you need a little bit of logic, reasoning, intelligence, sukshma buddhi. So it is not that academic intelligence, but the sukshma buddhi to understand what is kshetra and what is kshetra dnya. So it is more of uh, jnana side, jnana sadhana of uh, our journey. So after going through Karma Yoga, Raja Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, now we are coming to Jnana Yoga, uh, Jnana side of our sadhana. Uh, why I'm not going to the next slide? Oh, yeah. Okay. So today we will be looking at these two topics subject object relationship uh, we will try to understand what is subject what is the uh, the kshetra dnya and object that is kshetra so what is both uh, as individual and what is the relation between these two and if we will not understand them pro properly, if we'll have any misconception, any uh, wrong understanding or any mixing of these two, then that will create to, to the problem. And again, in this chapter only, we will get the solution. So what is the problem and solution we all are going through? Then we will look into the first seven shlokas of this chapter and at the end we will do group practice of chanting. Next slide. Let me just. The next slide. So what is uh, just a minute. Sorry, I cannot access these slides. Okay. So this subject object relationship, just a minute. Sorry about that. Okay. So we will look into what is subject object relationship. Before starting this, if um, I will ask you hmm, that, how are you today? So do you want to answer me in one sentence? Probably you can unmute yourself and just tell me, how are you today? How are you feeling? Anyone mm -hmm. of you? Very good, Kirti. Sorry, very good that I uh, heard. What was the other thing? Happy. Happy. Anything mm -hmm. else? Eager. Eager. Okay. Eager. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So, a uh, very good, happy, eager to learn. So, uh, how and from where you get this feeling? Or if I just ask you, how are you? You're saying very good. So, this is nothing but an experience, right? I am feeling happy. I am feeling very good. So, this is the experience you're getting. Or even 
you feel eager to learn so that is desire to learn to know something okay so why you are getting that that feeling or why or from where you are getting that experience can you just again as i've said keep your thinking caps on can you just uh, tell me that answer from the body and mind kitki yes yes that's true that's right rajeshwari did you say something manas manas from manas. the manas part okay yeah. okay manas. from manas yes that's correct and the same thing the body mind manas these are part of what is that you no it's not me it's not it's not me then what is body and mind so that comes under the topic object field known okay and who is getting that experience the subject knower experiencer so the object or the field of activities means if i am sleeping if i am talking if i am doing any work this is the field of activities and that is i am doing with the help of my body my senses my mind my intellect my thoughts so that all come under kshetra and the knower of that particular field of activity come under kshetrajnya now the connection between the kshetra and kshetrajnya or subject and object or the relation between these two is the subject in you the knower or experiencer in you cannot function without world of objects around because you have got body because you have got mind because of these objects or kshetra you have possessed you are getting that experience can you imagine without body and mind can you get that experience so that is the relation without field nor of the field cannot strive or achieve we cannot achieve if we don't have these upadhis these mediums these tools correct yet nor is different from known first needs to build field of experience okay so for example if i get the desire to swim hmm okay you have that desire but then what if you don't have swimming pool can you swim no so first you need to build the field that is the swimming pool field of enjoyment and the swimmer the enjoyer the experiencer can actually swim into the swimming pool now for example when you are dreaming okay you are dreamer because you are dreaming but once you come out of the dreaming state you are no more dreamer you become a wakeful person but think about but at that moment when you are awake or when you are dreaming all the field of activities all the objects they exist and hence you call yourself as dreamer or waker but think about deep sleep does anything exist at that moment 
I'm just uh, bringing this, sorry, slide uh, means the window here because I want to <laughs> see you all. <laughs> yeah. So can you tell me what happens in the deep sleep state? I'm not talking about dreaming. The concept of I. Sorry? We lose the concept of I. Correct. Why? Why you lose the concept of I-ness, my self-identity? In deep sleep, both the body and mind are in rest. So the only the consciousness is existing. That's mm -hmm. why we use, lose the subjective concept of I. Yeah, because in deep sleep, the field, okay, the kshetra, the object around you, the field around you is not existing. They get lost and hence the sense of INS also lost. You got that relationship between these two? But once I come from deep sleep state to the dreaming state, in dreams, my mind starts functioning. Even my body is not moving anywhere else. My senses are active. My thinking process is active. So coming into the existence, the kshetra. And because a kshetra is there, kshetranya is there. But once you dive deep into the deep sleep or those who can go into the deepest state of meditation or samadhi, they give up on all the kshetra, all the objects, all the upadhis, all the uh, field of activities. And hence they lose their own identity as well. So if kshetra is there, kshetradnya is there. If there is no kshetra, kshetradnya will not be there. So that is the relation between these two. Okay. Is that clear? Do you have any questions? Okay. No. Yes. No. Okay. So, uh, as we have seen, deep sleep, absence of objects, hence absence of sleeper, the subject. So, who is uh, the kshetradnya? The, the one who perceives, one who feels, one who thinks, but when that Kshetradnya gets involved into these objects, he either enjoys or he either suffers. Now the problem can start occurring. Hmm? And what are the uh, objects come under Kshetra? That is your body, mind, intellect, BMI, and objects, emotions, thoughts, feelings, everything. Everything come under Kshetra. Not only your Upadhis, but whatever you see around you, everything comes under this Kshetra category. And the one who perceives it, one who experiences it, comes under Kshetra Dnya. Hmm? Okay. Next slide, please. I don't know why this is not working today. Okay. So now the problem is misconceptions. Now, if you know that Kshetradnya is different from Kshetra hmm, and you have got nothing to do with the objects or whatever come under the category of Kshetra. But then if you mix these two, if you have any misunderstanding, misconceptions, being forgetful of your divine nature, identification with these material entities, 
mixing these kshetran and kshetradnya if you do that the problem will start arising so all the time this gnana this knowledge has to be clear in our heads all the time that i am different from this body i am different from this mind i am different through the emotions i am going through right now i am different from my uh, you know the role as a mother or father or a wife or husband whatever it is all the time so what is the solution atma anatma viveka or kshetra kshetradnya vibhaga that is the solution knower is different from known but he has misconception that i am in world who is happy i am happy who is successful i am successful who is loser i am loser i am mixing up these two all the time and hence i enjoy or i suffer i become happy or i become sad i feel successful or i feel just depressed disappointed why because that creates the false ego within us hmm? this creates ego but again you are not limited ego you are not ego uh, even you are not ego you are not uh, the the thing what you are feeling right now you are different from that your pure self your pure consciousness doesn't matter how the weather is outside whether it is you know having a rainy day uh, people in uk can understand it better because all the time here it rains or it's chilly or it's windy tell yourself that it doesn't matter whether it is a warm sunlight or a snowfall nothing affects the knower within you because that is different from what you are feeling so till this point is everything clear because i don't want to go ahead if these uh, you know concepts of kshetra and kshatradnya is not clear any questions thank you kitki it's clear but can uh -huh. i just uh, ask a small question before we go ahead please yeah yeah i mean what you said now that uh, we are not the things which we know by atma viveka we are atma that thing is clear that mm -hmm. what you one thing which you made in the previous slide the kshetra mm -hmm. is the one like objects mind body and kshetradnya mm -hmm. uh, is like atma mm -hmm. my understanding is kshetradnya is the basic for everything if kshetradnya is not there there is no point in having body mind emotions and everything they all become meaningless am i correct in thinking that way please <laughs> uh, uh you know so far uh... see even i am a student i am a learner i am not uh, would say that i am expert is in in this subject but unless and until kshetra doesn't exist kshetradnya won't have any existence it is a other way around okay uh, i have tried to explain you with the deep sleep uh, you know uh concept yeah. why you why you lose your own existence do you do you have that sense of existence in the deep sleep um but uh, only, my... after, only after when you come out of deep sleep you have your sense of i ness that i am i exist but do you get that experience in the deep sleep no we don't get the experience in the deep sleep because we don't have the uh, the other word they call it like a antakaranam so we don't have the objects to experience exactly. what is happening you said that you said that that antakarana is also part of kshetradnya uh, sorry kshetra kshetra yeah correct yeah kshetradnya is only one thing which is the pure consciousness there is nothing there only in kshetra we got plenty of things 
करेक्ट सो अनलेस एंड एंटेल क्षेत्र डजेंट एक्सिस्ट यू वोट हैव युअर ओन सेंस ऑफ आई एन एस दैट आई एक्सिस्ट that that relation you have between these these two but all the time you have to remind yourself you should have that viveka that i am not this i am not body because right now we are so much attached to this body isn't it so we feel that this body means i am no you are different from this body okay so let's go ahead we'll go through the shlokas and see what i meant to say is i am not saying in in deep sleep also uh with that sense of experience as iness is not there it doesn't mean uh that nor is is like a third person is witnessing everything oh he is angry he is happy he is wake he is waking right now he is dreaming he is sleeping into the deep sleep as a third person if you can you know imagine from top angle he is looking at everything and he is not getting involved or he is not getting affected by all these things happening at kshetra level he is unaffected principle within you uh is that clear yeah thank you ketki i don't want to really deviate you are in a very nice flow uh, <laughs> but i somehow got very convinced uh, that uh, shaktrajna is the true thing which is present even in the deep sleep that because the shaktra uh, uh, you're right that is present but you don't have that experience that i exist at that moment because the objects around you are vanished okay correct correct keki um, i think we'll go ahead and uh, we can progress please thank you thank you all right so we'll start with this uh, dhyana shloka you uh, can unmute your uh, calls and repeat after me yam brahma varunendra rudra maruta yam brahma yam brahma varunendra rudra maruta stunvanti divyai stavai stunvanti divyai stavai vedai sanga pada क्रमो उपनिषदी गायनावस्थितगते न मनसा पश्यो पश्यो यदुसुरासुरगण यदुसुरासुरगण मीनिंग ऑफ दिस ध्यान श्लोक टू हू ब्रह्मा इंद्र रुद्र एंड मरुत प्रेस और सैंग यू नो डिफरेंट सॉन्ग आउट ऑफ देर प्रेस whom the samagana exponents sing in praise with uh, recensions of veda vedangas padakramas and upanishads whom the yogis perceive in their minds during their dhyana avastha with him as the only refuge whose end uh, 
the devas and devangas do not know may my salutation or namaskara to him means even uh, devaganas uh, devangas they even cannot compre comprehend who is that great uh, divine power to that principle i am bow, uh, bowing down this shloka shows the dawn of kali yuga where the direct influence of the devas are diminished and bhakti to the uh, and bhakti to bhagwan rises the kali is for bhakti and upasana so uh, as you know we know that there are four yugas so in satya yuga or uh, treta yuga there is lot of importance given to yajna and uh, lot of karma kanda then as you know the time progressed into dwapara yuga uh, there is more of uh, upasana uh, sorry yeah upasana and um, the study of scriptures but now in the time of kali yuga it is more of you know bhakti the nama sankirtan because uh, we you you cannot get you know that time for doing yajna and homa and doing lots of vratas and karma kandas and all that stuff what uh, shri krishna is just saying that just take nama nama japa has lot of importance in this yuga so uh, to suitably channelize bhakta the shloka says that even brahma rudra maruta and varuna all prostrate and praise the bhagwan even the entire vedas are shown to be praising him the yogis hold him in dharana in their deepest state of meditation dhyana avastha samadhi avastha uh, his and even the devas do not know this is the introduction to paramatma to the people of kali yuga okay Now we'll start with the first shloka of this chapter. Please repeat after me. Arjuna uvacha. Arjuna uvacha. Prakrutim purusham chayva. Prakrutim purusham chayva. Shetram shetradnya meva cha. Etram kshetra dhyameva cha. Etad veditu mitchami. Etad veditu mitchami. Dhyanam dhyam cha keshava. Dhyanam dhyam cha keshava. So this is. the uh, first shloka of this chapter but it is in the earlier editions of bhagavad gita this verse was not there but it was added later on by madhusudan saraswati who has also given us the beautiful dhyana shlokas of bhagavad gita in around 16th century so if we consider this shloka as the first shloka of this chapter the total number of uh, shlokas of bhagavad gita Uh, will become 701 hmm? otherwise we say there are total 700 shlokas in bhagavad gita so in some books you will see this shloka in some books this the question what arjuna is asking is not there so what arjuna is asking o keshava i wish to understand what are prakriti and purusha and what are kshetra and kshetradnya i also wish to know what is true knowledge and what is the object of this knowledge hmm? so as one of the member you know rightly said that i am eager to learn see how beautiful even these uh, you know uh, bhagavad gita has happened so 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 long back even that arjuna within us is still there exists within us Arjuna is also very eager to learn. After have heard from you know Shri Krishna about uh, what is karma, what is bhakti, 
now he wants to learn he is very eager he is very passionate to know about all these things still you know that arjuna is there within us and shri krishna through bhagavad gita uh, is answering all our questions so for his question now shri krishna is answering uh, or started answering his question श्री श्री इदम शरीरम कौंतेय इदम शरीरम कौंतेय क्षेत्रमित्यभिधीयते क्षेत्रमित्यभिधीयते सुप्रीम डिवाइन लॉर्ड सेट ओ अर्जुन धिस बॉडी इज टर्म्ड एज क्षेत्र the field of activities and the one who knows this body is called kshetrajna the knower of the field by the sages who recognize the truth about both so uh, vyakti who knows who knows this who can know you know uh, this truth the great rishis the great sages when they go into the deepest state of meditation they have seen they have perceived them as different from all the uh, field of activities or the kshetra they have actually got that experience that i am different from all these what is seem to be me but no this is not me so that's what shri krishna is saying in this shloka so what is kshetra and what is kshetradnya kshiyate iti kshetram that which is subject to change and decay is kshetram like body mind and the whole world around you hmm? that comes under kshetra so that is the matter principle and that is a chetana it is sthula it is jad lower order of reality our greatest attachment is towards our body that is deha bhiman so we are extremely attached to this body if something little happens with the body we get really disturbed we feel bad that oh why this happened to me so because we feel that this body is me that misunderstanding is still there deep rooted within us and what is kshetradnya subject behind kshetra is kshetradnya yah vyakti one who knows this you know that conscious principle within us the chetana tattva because that chetana is there uh this body mind world uh, you know can act otherwise they are a chetana every experienced object presupposes existence of an experiencer that is subject although it can't be seen for example our own eyes and world perceived now uh you know in this picture if you can see this uh, lady is sitting in this window and looking outside hmm? she is looking through the window at the outside you know the world uh whatever she perceives through her eyes or through the window that window those buildings maybe that water body or sky everything comes under kshetra and 
even the eyes through which she is looking through the window is also come under kshetra the field hmm but i cannot see my own eyes but through the eyes i can perceive this world correct so everything that the principle which is behind that like if you look at any picture in olden days we used to get those you know nice albums we look at the picture but how that picture has come into existence or why we are uh, how or why i can see that picture i have seen that through the camera and even through the camera who is looking your eyes and even behind eyes who is looking that kshetrajnya so it is a, a bit complicated but you have to uh, have that constant viveka viveka buddhi we are combination of achen achetana kshetram and chetana kshetrajnya we are combination of these two now what is the sadhana is to shift from limited kshetram to limitless kshetrajnya hmm so this is uh, how we can differentiate between between these two principles uh now we'll look into the next shloka please repeat after me kshetra dnyam chaapi maam vidhi kshetra dnyai chaapi maam vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharata sarva kshetreshu bharata क्षेत्र क्षेत्र ज्ञानम क्षेत्र क्षेत्र ज्ञानम यम मत मम यम मत मम सो ओ डिसेंडेंट ऑफ भारत आई एम ऑल्सो द नोअर of all the individual fields of activity now here uh, shri krishna is declaring the most important thing uh, let me first read the meaning of this shloka i am shri krishna is the knower of all the individual fields of activity the understanding of the body as the field of activities and the soul as the knower of the field this high hold to be true knowledge what is true knowledge what is gnanam the understanding my body is kshetra and my soul as the knower of this kshetra is the ultimate knowledge is the true knowledge even we can say that this third shloka of bhagavad gita from 13th chapter is the mahavakya you know in vedas in upanishads they have mahavakya aham brahmasmi the same thing is uh, you know resonating in this shloka mahavakya which reveals jivatma paramatma aikyam most important shloka kshetra kshetrajnyam viveka you have to have that sukshma buddhi essence of vedanta and this is nothing but the essence of vedanta which has to be contemplated and meditated upon again and again and all the time if you want to escape this uh, loop of suffering this loop of birth and death you have to have this clear understanding between kshetra and kshetrajnya so this is i think you can write this shloka baby in front of your desk keep it there read it every day meditate on it and that's how that thought will sink in and that will reflect in your uh, you know thinking and behavior and your in your actions so um how but you know it's not easy just by reading in scriptures if everyone gets realized uh, that is not 
happening that is not possible so there are stages of again you know this jnana refinement of our consciousness because at this stage at this moment i am too much attached to my body do i feel that i am different from this body yes i have learned in the book in the scripture that i am not this body but when it really comes into you know uh practicality or you know in vyavahar does that happen so what is right now the ignorance adnyana always the journey starts from adnyana that i am this body i am this mind i am this you know whatever i have achieved so far but then as i do sadhana as i read scriptures as i attend satsangas as i have good company of you know uh, people that discuss all these uh, stuff from scriptures i get that indirect knowledge paroksha gyan oh yes i am this body but backed up by consciousness that chetana principle that higher uh, you know uh, stage of reality then by constantly repeating it every day contemplation repetition we start creating or bringing into action that discriminative power power of discrimination kshetra kshetradnya viveka i am this i am the consciousness but with this incidental body this temporary body so before i am this body then i am body with consciousness oh i am chetana with this temporary upadhi this temporary body and then as you progress into the sadhana with vedantic and upanishadic study sarvagatah oh consciousness is all pervading there is nothing else but the consciousness but the chetana and then when that contemplation you know goes deep, deep uh, into your meditation into your long practice meditation then what happens you get direct experience a paroksha gyan direct knowledge the same consciousness is paramatma also that this consciousness within me is paramatma but right now we are all living in the sense of duality this is me and that is god you know but the union of these two when there is no sense of duality and becomes one the same thing but very important thing here that we should not right now understand that i am paramatma hmm? according to bhagavad gita real knowledge is to understand the soul super soul and the material world that this as a jivatma paramatma and the jagat these are right now we are at sadhana stage when we progress into our sadhana then there is a stage might come that there is a perfect union between these two uh, you know right now ansh by ansh that paramatma exists within us but right now we are not paramatma we are not com- complete we are incomplete we are limited beings we are not limitless beings right now so there is a great way ahead uh, to progress to continue our sadhana in this journey so from adnyana to paroksha gnana to kshetra kshetratnya viveka sarvagatah all pervading or you know all in in uh, in enka- all in passing gnana uh, a paroksha gnana to come up to a paroksha direct knowledge direct experience is the journey that's how our consciousness will get refined a lot of work has to be done okay shloka 4 
प्लीज रिपीट आफ्टर मी यत्म सॉरी हैव आय सेट समथिंग एल्स सच यो स च यो यभावश्च सो लिसन एंड आई विल एक्सप्लेन टू यू वॉट दैट फील्ड इज एंड वॉट इट्स नेचर इज ना हियर इफ यू सी यत Yat 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 is repeated so many times here. So uh, each represents uh, like you know what is field, what its is nature. So here Shri Krishna himself is uh, telling you that I am going to explain you, but in sama sena that is in brief. Hmm? I will also explain how change takes place within it. from what it was created who the knower of the field of activities is and what his powers are hmm? so here sa and ch sa represents jivatma the jiva and ch represents paramatma samasena so what is whatever is explained in vedas and upanishads compared to that in bhagavad gita shri krishna is explaining in brief so what is samasena it is in brief he is going to explain what he is going to explain what is body what is kshetra what all things come under kshetra its constituents you know like if you uh, cook any recipe uh, prepare any dish that dish contains different ingredients isn't it similarly god has created this beautiful kshetra so who else can tell isn't it he is going to tell what are its constituents and to whom it is giving shelter so in this kshetra who is residing who is getting shelter within this kshetra then modified forms it might appear hmm? why it is born what is the prayojana why he has created this kshetra and glory of parmatma that is kshetradnya and above all what is that kshetradnya's influence prabhava so if you see here such a yo yat prabhavascha what is his influence Uh, or what is its glory all these things krishna is going to explain jiva should not con consider itself either as paramatma so at this point we are neither this body neither the paramatma as well we are jiva we are these beings limited uh, you know incomplete beings and krishna is explaining why in this birth you are in human form what is its prayojana why you are born and what is the influence of this kshetradnya so but right now remind yourself neither i am this body so i am not at this end neither i am on on the other end that i am paramatma right now i am jiva hmm <clears throat> the next shloka <coughs> ब्रह्मसूत 
Very good chanting. So the meaning, great sages have sung the truth about the field and the knower of the field in many fold ways. Hmm? It has been stated in various Vedic hymns and especially revealed in Brahma Sutra with sound logic and conclusive evidence. So what Krishna is saying, because I am telling you, you don't have to believe it. If you want to, uh, you know, get that experience by yourself, yes, of course you can. So here you should use your own thinking, logic, reasoning, and you come to a conclusion with your own experience as an evidence. You don't have to believe what I'm saying. You yourself can get experience. But about this Kshetra and Kshetradnya, not only me, but great sages, also in Vedas and Upanishads, especially he is mentioning about Brahma Sutra here. In all these scriptures, the same topic is explained. The reference for validating spiritual knowledge is the Vedas. So if we have any doubt, you have to go back to Vedas. Why? Because they are the Apta Vachana, authoritative. To elaborate this knowledge of the Vedas, many sages wrote texts and these traditionally became included in the gamut of the Vedic scriptures because they hold to, to the authority of the Vedas. Whatever they are saying, they are not saying out of their own thinking, out of their own imagination. No, whatever is there in Vedas, taking there as that as an authority, they are elaborating the same concept in different ways. So great rishis like Vasishtha, in uh, Yoga Vasishtha, uh, you know, you get the knowledge from Rishi Vasishtha, Valmiki, Parashara, Veda Vyasa, etc. Amongst these scriptural texts, Brahma Sutras, the Vedanta Darshan, is considered as the last word on the topic of the distinction between the soul, the material body and the God. And hence, Shri Krishna particularly mentions it in the above verse. So when we talk about Prasthanatrai, it has uh, Brahma Sutra, then uh, Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads, correct? So along with as he is explaining uh, through Bhagavad Gita, he is mentioning about Brahma Sutra. Okay. So now I have combined these two shlokas together. Shloka number six and seven. Uh, we will look into it. So please first chant after me. Mahabhutanyahankaro. Mahabhutanya hankaro Buddhira vyakta mevacha Buddhira vyakta mevacha Indriyani dashai kamcha Indriyani dashai kamcha Pancha chendriya gocharaha Pancha Chendriya Gocharaha Icha Dvesha Sukham Dukham Icha Dvesha Sukham Dukham Sangha Chetana Dhrutihi Sangha Chetana Dhrutihi Sanghaas Chetana Dhrutihi Sanghaas Chetana Dhrutihi Etat Kshetram Samasena 
So, this shloka 6 and 7 list out whatever comes under Kshetra. There is nothing more or nothing less apart from these. So, what are these? The field of activities, the Kshetra is composed of the five great elements, that is Pancha Mahabhutas, false ego, ahankara or mahat tattva, the intellect, buddhi, the unmanifested primordial matter, prakriti, the eleven senses, five knowledge senses, that is jnanindriyas, five working senses, that is karmindriyas and manas. So mind is the eleventh indriya. Uh, and the five object of the senses. Even the object of the senses are included in Kshetra. Because when you get attached to the object, or uh, you know, through your senses, your mind starts working. The, you know, the 11th Indriya, the mind and the object of senses have got close connection and hence the object of senses are also included in Kshetra. Then desire and aversion, happiness, misery, the body, even consciousness, Chetana and the will, all these comprise the field, the Kshetra and its Vikar modifications. Hmm? And what again he is uh, saying in Samasena, again in brief, I am telling you all these consist of Kshetra. So in Sankhya Yoga, we learn about uh, when we did our Jnana Yoga Shloka Sangra, we, you know, gone through all the 24 Tattva or principle of Sankhya, Pancha Mahabhutas, which are these Pancha Mahabhutas, fundamental elements, earth, water, fire, air and space. What are Tan Matras? That is the sense objects, ta taste, touch, smell, sight and sound. Shabda, Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, all these. Then Pancha Jnanendriya, five knowledge senses, ears, eyes, tongue, skin and nose. Karmendriyas, voice, hands, that is Vaka, legs, genitals and anus. Mind, intellect and false ego and ultimately Prakriti, the avyakta. Uh, all come under uh, Kshetra. Then what are the qualities and Vikara modifications of Kshetra? The body. This body supports the soul in its quest for happiness in the world. Because if you don't have body, you cannot get any experience. Consciousness, the life force that exists in the soul. So here consciousness is taken as the prana. You can also take it, take it as pancha prana that exists in the uh, body or because of this the soul can experience uh, through prana the body is active and you experience the outer world. Your will enables the soul to achieve goals, desire, longing for the acquisition of an object, situation or person, aversion, a state of the mind and intellect, uh, happiness, feeling of pleasure through fulfillment of desires and misery, pain experienced through disagreeable circumstances. So these all consist of, you have to just remember uh, that through these 24 tattvas, I am functional into the external world. And when I am functional into the external world, what vikaras I go through, raga, dvesha, even this body is vikara, body is regarded as its vikara, modification, consciousness, that life force, your will, your desire, your happiness, your misery. So whatever you go through at mental, emotional level, that also comprises or that kshetra comprises all these things. Okay, so here we are stopping. Do you have any questions?
I hope you are all with me <laughs> through all this uh, explanation. Uh, so do you have any questions? OK, so if not, we'll stop here. Thank you for joining in today. Uh, in the next month, uh, that is in month of uh, May, the second Saturday. What is the date? Uh, 14th. Huh? 14th of May, we will be looking at the next shlokas of the same chapter of this uh, Kshetra Kshetra Nivibhaga Yoga. Uh, so till that, you can go through the slides again, recordings again, tell your, ask your friends if they want to, you know, uh, uh, want to learn this chapter of Bhagavad Gita. They're more than welcome to join the session. And uh, here we'll stop. So thank you very much. Take care. And I will see you next thank month. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Yeah. Thank you, so thank you. Much. Have a good Bye. Bye.